The San Francisco 49ers and Kyle Shanahan have lost another Super Bowl, despite again having a lead at halftime. So today, we are going to take this pretty insane roster, and we are going to see if we can get the job done and finally get them a Super Bowl win. And the hardest part of this is probably going to be keeping this team together, because it's going to get expensive. But I am excited to get into this one. I'm excited to see what players we're going to draft in the upcoming draft, and how insane saying we could make this team. But be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed today's video, and if we can get to just 2,000 likes on this video, I have something very fun planned. Not necessarily a realistic rebuild, but something fun. So if you like goofy rebuilds, then be sure to leave a like on the video. I mean, if there's anything I could ever ask you to do, it's just that. I would appreciate it. And also subscribe for more, which, oh yeah, thank you all so much for 40k. That's insane. We're less than 10,000 away from 50,000. I mean, that's how math works works, obviously. But yeah, that's just insane to me, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. It'll make you an OG of the channel for when we inevitably hit 10 million subscribers, I'm sure. And all I do are Madden rebuilds, so if you like those, you're definitely in the right place. And last thing, just let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have down below, because if I use your suggestion, I'll give you a shout out if you care about that. It just helps me know what y'all want to see, so be sure to let me know in the comments. Can be a realistic rebuild, can be any chaotic rebuild idea you have, just let me know. But without further ado, let's get into this rebuild. But now here in the offseason, we have negative 5.9 mil in cap to work with. How much are the 49ers actually projected to have? Let me see. All right, I have no idea. Every single thing I look at says a different number, but <laughs> I think we should be able to get out of this. We might have to cut Eric Armstead. I mean, I'm sure 49ers fans would hate me if I did that, but it would save us 18 mil. Do we have anyone important to re-sign? Let me see. He might actually be a re-sign target here. Let me see. No, it's Chase Young, and honestly, that's mostly it. Jawan Jennings had a good Super Bowl, but he was kind of mid most of the year. I do want Chase Young back, though. He's not that expensive here. Let me see what I can do. Okay, well, just through restructuring deals, we were able to free up like 30 mil, so now we have almost 27 mil to work with. We'll bring back Chase Young, assuming he wants to. I hope he does. Three years, 34 mil, and he takes it. Honestly, for the rest of these guys, like, I don't know. I might just rather, you know, draft some new players, get Young younger there and not have to pay him. So let's get into free agency and let's see if we can do anything with this team. If not, we might just get to the draft. Okay, well something unfortunate here is that Trent Williams actually retired. And now this O-line that already wasn't great has become the worst O-line in the league. I mean, that's definitely something we'll have to address in the draft. I'm not super worried about it for Madden though, because it almost seems like the lower overall your offensive line is, the better it plays. So I, I'll fix it, but I don't know. There aren't many good offensive linemen in free agency though, unfortunately. They're all either really old, not interested, or like not that good. I kind of wanted Ezra Cleveland. I feel like he would be a pretty good scheme fit, but he he already had other big offers and he's a little more expensive than I would like. We'll try to get Matt Hennessy. I guess I can go player friendly. You know, elite name. If we're building the all name team, he definitely makes it. But other than him, I don't think there's anything I want to do in free agency. I'm just scared of the cap space here. I don't know what's going to happen. So let's see if we can bring in Matt Hennessy. I know huge free agent class here and he does sign. Okay, cool. Honestly, I kind of think Jalen Moore is like not bad in real life when he's had to play. If we absolutely have to start him somewhere, that's fine, but like, probably our entire draft is gonna be offensive linemen. Not actually, but like, a lot of it. But now, in the draft, I actually have no idea what I wanna do with our first pick. Or, well, I know what position I wanna go for the first pick, but beyond the first pick. We really don't have many needs on this team other than offensive line. Third receiver, sure. Maybe another linebacker? I don't know. What are gonna be our expiring contracts? Brandon Ayuk, well, we definitely want him back. Same with Charvarius Ward, Eric Armstead, Dre Greenlaw, Talanoa Hufanga, Isaiah Oliver. Okay, there are a lot, but let's go with a tackle here. You know what? I don't think I've ever taken Patrick Paul in a rebuild before. He looks pretty good here. I mean, he's only a second to third round talent, but he's one of the higher rated tackles in these draft classes, I'm pretty sure, other than like the big mid to early first projected guys. So we'll take him to, I guess, be our left tackle. There might be a better tackle available at this point in real life, but here they all got scooped up, it looks like, so let's go with Patrick Paul. Hidden Dev, we'll take it. Ooh, and Kamari Lassiter's still here. I've taken him, I think, once in a rebuild before, but, I mean, he's still here, so let's take him to be the replacement to Isaiah Oliver. We could even start him this year if I wanted to. I don't know if I want to do that, but this is just a planning for the future pick here. Only 
normal dev, I forgot about that, but should be good. Good Excel, we'll take it. Ooh, should we go with Johnny Wilson? That would be interesting. I <laughs> I don't know what team he would be a good fit for. He's just such a weird player. That'd be kind of fun though. Ooh, Christian Haynes is still here. We do still need another lineman. There should be some good receivers still available with the next pick, but this will be the last pick I'll show. Let's go with Christian Haynes out of UConn. Hidden Dev, another one. Really good agility. That's interesting. We'll take it. Our O-line isn't going to be the best overall, but it should be younger. It should have more potential for the future. So let's get to the end of the draft and we'll see how we did. Okay, pretty good draft here. I think the 49ers are going to have a lot more picks in real life from the, you know, compensatory picks they get in the diversity higher picks they get. I think that's what it is. I don't know. They're definitely good at getting draft picks. Spending them is a little bit of a different story. They, some of their draft picks are a little questionable, but anyways, I just, I wish, I wish compensatory picks were a thing in this game. I guess it, it might get a little messy, but still. Either way, Patrick Paul is a 73 overall. He's pretty good. Kamari Lassiter is a 74. I mean, if this was a normal Madden draft, this would be terrible, but these draft classes are just lower overall. I kind of like it that way anyways, though. It feels a little more realistic than, oh, 585 over overall players are coming into the league this year. I don't know why that was so hard for me to say, but yeah, I just think the lower overalls are a little more realistic. Either way, we doubled up on linemen, doubled up on receivers. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> just Malachi Corley was good value where we got him. So pretty decent draft, a few new starters, and let's get into year one of this rebuild. All right, we're actually looking pretty good. I mean, we pretty much just look like the 49ers without Trent Williams, which isn't great, but we have some younger pieces, obviously. We're gonna start Johnny Wilson. I feel like he's just the most fun out of our options there. I mean, they would probably start Ronnie Bell if this was their receiving core, but like, come on, Johnny Wilson's the most fun out of those three. So we're gonna start him. The defense is the 49ers, pretty much. No real differences yet, but once we have more money, we can, you know, figure some stuff out, change some things if I really want to. I have no idea how this team's gonna do in simulation, though. I mean, most of the time, the 49ers absolutely suck in this game for some reason. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but let's get to the midseason point and we will see how we're doing. Okay, wow, we're actually good. I kind of thought we would be terrible, but no, we're five and two. We'll take that. The question is, well, I was gonna ask, are we only good because we have a ton of players to re-sign and they're, you know, playing for a contract year, but I already know what the answer to that is. It is yes, we have a lot of players that need a contract this year and we only have 27 mil to work with, so <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna do this. I guess we'll start with Brandon Ayuk. We'll go five years, 114 mil, and he takes it. Okay, cool. And now we have seven mil to work. I don't know if we can bring any of these guys back. We could get Talanoa Hufanga. That is very cheap. Five years, 35 and a half mil. He takes it. And then the rest of these guys, uh, yeah, good luck on that. We'll, <laughs> we'll reassess at the end of the year. Sometimes money just frees up, you know. I Does the cap expand in this game like it does in real life? I should know that. I've been playing this game for almost 10 years at this point. Still don't know. But we should be able to restructure deals at the end of the year anyways, so it, I, I think we can get at least a few of these guys back. Anyways, let's get to the end of the season and we will see how we finish. I, I hope this isn't a choke job season, but we'll see. Okay, well, we definitely didn't choke. We finished 12 and 5. We had one of the worst pass Ds in the league, which it seems like any team I ever use has one of the worst pass Ds in the league. I have no idea why that happens, but it is what it is. I don't know what I can do about that. But 12 and 5, that is a great start to this rebuild, one that I'm kind of surprised about. But let's check out our season stats. We'll see if we had anyone underperform. Brock Purdy definitely did not. Almost 3,700 yards, 41 touchdowns, only five picks. Nice completion percentage. Also, nice longest pass. Not a crazy amount of yards, but a lot of touchdowns and only five picks. Insane year from him. Christian McCaffrey, 1,500 yards, 5.2 per carry, 11 touchdowns. Really good year there. Does he get you? Yeah, okay, he does get used in the receiving game in this game. 400 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, not as much as he gets used in the receiving game in real life, but whatever. Brandon Ayuk, 1,300 yards and 20 touchdowns. Damn. But outside of him, only less than 700 yards for Debo. Johnny Wilson was all right as a rookie. George Kittle, only 500 yards, 10 touchdowns. I don't know what their numbers were in real life, but I would bet it was a lot more than that. The blocking was good, though. Patrick Paul wasn't great, but the, the rest of the line held up really well. And then on defense, Fred Warner led the team with 112 tackles, 111 for Greenlaw, tackles for loss, 13 for Bosa and Young, 12 for Hargrave, and sacks, 12 and a half for Nick Bosa, 11 and a half for Eric Armstead, seven for Hargrave, six for Young, and picks, four for Greenlaw, Warner, Ward, three for Brown, two for Hufanga, and one for Lenore. Our numbers
numbers were very, very good across the board. I mean, I guess as you would expect for a 12 and five team. MVP surprisingly doesn't go to Brock Purdy. It goes to Dak Prescott. Big shocker there. He's MVP in this game like 80% of the time, it seems like. Offensive player of the year goes to Brandon Ayuk. McCaffrey at eight, Purdy at nine. Defensive player of the year goes to Aiden Hutchinson, which is kind of different. I'm glad to see that. Better than the same thing every year. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Michael Penix Jr. on the Rams. So I guess Matt Stafford retired. That's interesting. Johnny Wilson at number six and defensive rookie of the year goes to Jeremiah Trotter on the Seahawks. He could end up there. I mean, the Seahawks definitely will need linebacker, but that was a great season from us. And let's see who we are going to be facing in the divisional. Oh, well, that's tough. It's, <laughs> it's the 11 and six Dallas Cowboys. I mean, they weren't the best. They were only 11 and six. So that's still good. But the Cowboys in this game are the direct opposite of how they are in real life. In this game, they're not the best in the regular season. They're usually good, but when it comes to the playoffs, they are like almost unstoppable in this game, which is the direct opposite of real life. Great playoff team, or no, great regular season team, terrible playoff team. Just cannot win a playoff game for the life of them. So I, I don't have much faith for this game. We might get smoked. We could win, I guess. I mean, we were better in the regular season. We'll just have to see. So let's simulate it and we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, fine. Damn, we get beat 42 to seven. See what I mean? They're insane in the playoffs. Probably the best playoff team in this game for whatever reason. It, they'll probably lose this next game because I was saying all that. We'll see. But let's get into the off season. This should be a challenging offseason. I hope it's not, but it might be. And the Cowboys do, of course, win the Super Bowl 31 to 28 over the Chiefs. Yeah, that's realistic. Thanks, EA. Isn't, I think I've asked this before, but isn't one of the like devs for this game or like one of the main devs or something, a Cowboys fan? I'm, I'm pretty sure. So that's, that's something. But we have negative 1.8 mil in cap space. That's going to be tough. Dre Greenlaw got X Factor. Charvarius Ward got Superstar. I, I don't know if we're going to be able to bring him back though. I mean, he's just not interested. I don't know why he would wouldn't be, but he isn't. All right, let... Again, let's see if we can free up some money. This could be another cut that people would be unhappy with. I guess we didn't cut anyone last year, but let's just see what we got to do. Oh, we can't restructure Debo. Great. Okay, well, I wasn't able to free up nearly as much cap as I expect. How are we going to be able to re-sign Brock Purdy when we need to? Like, we're losing some pretty key pieces here, and we can't really cut anyone to free up any money. I mean, we could cut Debo Samuel, which would save like 17 mil, but that's not worth it. Yeah, this is tough. Uh, <laughs> Eric Armstead, I would say, is a no. Lenore, he isn't too expensive. He, we can't bring Ward back. Definitely not. Greenlaw? No. I couldn't figure out the math in my head how much that would be. I mean, he's obviously going to reject this, but we might as well try. Yeah. Is the tag expensive? Oh, yeah. Okay, no. <laughs> how much is a corner tag? I don't have the cap. Suck my scrow. It literally says we do. Okay, he rejects it. How much is a corner tag? 21 mil? That's not too bad. I mean, we'll have a ton of negative cap, but we're going to be broke anyways. You know what? Here's the strat, actually. This is a little cheesy. Let's re-sign Lenore. Five years, 36 mil. He takes it. And now, let's tag Ward. We're gonna have negative 17 mil, but at least we have corners. But I guess let's just get straight to the draft, and we will see what we want to do this year. But in the draft, we pick at 27. And once again, let's see if we can find any good linemen. Because, I mean, we don't, we don't really need much else, even after losing some players. There are some pretty good centers. We could go with one of them. Ooh, Trevor Haynes at guard looks pretty good. Elite strength, A finesse for run and pass blocking, just bad power, which is, you know, weird because he had 39 bench reps, but whatever. Should we take him here? Is there anything better we could do? Tyler Duncan, eh, he's not very fast, but he looks really good on paper. This is kind of a reach, but I like Trevor Haynes. Let's see, unless there's a really good receiver, I think we'll take him. I don't know. None of the receivers look great. Tyrone James is probably the best, but I mean, he is 445 speed, a 439 at his pro day, but that's only good speed and decent acceleration. If he had good acceleration, I would take him, but I don't love that. He does have elite jumping though. He's great strength. His ratings are good. He's just not a very good route runner. I I don't know. Randy Maynard's also interesting. What's his speed? Solid and eh, no. His ratings look better, but the combine's worse. Should we just take Tyrone James? I mean, I think we can get a good guard with the next pick anyways. It looks like there are a lot of them this year. Is there a good receiver later though? Oh, 
Okay, I don't know if this guy's actually good, but George Winston, 424 speed, four elite ratings, a deep route, a spec catch, but everything else looks terrible. I don't know. He's something. Glenn Bryan looks pretty good, but nah, we'll go with Tyrone James. I have no idea if he's good, but we'll take him. Only normal dev. All right, whatever. But now let's go with Trevor Haynes, elite strength. Again, not very good power, but amazing finesse. Also a impact block and lead block. So let's take him. Hidden dev, 92 strength, which I was hoping would be a little higher, but whatever. It's always lower than I would expect, so we'll take it. And we might even go with another lineman with this third pick, depending on who's available. And we do still need a linebacker and a D-tackle. Let's see who's available. Jack Batten looks all right, and the rest of the linebackers do not, so we might have to take him. Actually, Cole Huff looks pretty good, but he's not good in coverage, and his combine wasn't the best. Alex Jones, that's, that's crazy. All right. Okay, but yeah, I think we'll go with Jack Batten. I wish he was a little more scouted. I don't feel great about this draft. <laughs> there just weren't many good players at our positions of need. I mean, there were some good guards, but there aren't many good linebackers. There aren't many good defensive tackles. There were in like the first round, but I didn't want to do that. The receiver class looked kind of terrible, but we'll go with Jack Batten. Only normal dev, that sucks, but good speed, good excel, good strength. We'll take it, I guess. But I'll make one or two more picks, and I will see y'all for the draft recap. Kill me, okay. <laughs> Tyrone James is a 71 overall. Well, his route running is absolutely terrible. It said B to D deep route, and apparently that was a D. I wish I knew that. Uh, yeah, he's he's not good. I'm gonna assume there was definitely a better option available at receiver. <laughs> Great, we got another Gabe Davis, but he wasn't really available to us. I mean, I guess we could have traded up, but like, whatever. Uh, Zay Nash was bad. I figured he was bad. Matthew Chapman would have been one overall better. Big difference there. Uh, Justin Nolan. I usually don't like the deep threat receivers because they're never as good as they look. Eh, he has normal anyway anyways, but would have been better. Whatever. It's fine. I'm great at drafting. Trevor Haynes is a 76 overall, though. Hidden dev. You know, really good strength and finesse, which is an interesting combo. Really good lead block and impact block. I think we'll put him at left guard and Hennessy at center. I think that's the plan. I don't know. We'll see. Batten's a 73. He's decent. That's pretty good value. And then I made these next two picks. Charles is only a 68. But actually, George Winston, the insanely fast receiver, is a better player than the guy we took in the first round. 99 speed and excel and agility, 92 jumping, 88 spec catch, 82 deep route, 95 change of direction. This guy looks insane if he was even like decent at anything other than that, but he's bad at everything else. I mean, his catch in traffic isn't bad, but pretty much everything else is. Uh, he's definitely not going to be a slot receiver for us, but I do want to get him playing time somewhere. And then I just sim the rest of this out, but yeah, this was not a great draft class, but at least we got a few starters. We got three, I think, maybe four. Ooh, that quarter back. Damn, 83 overall Theoterra. This wasn't the best draft class ever. I mean, the top two guys were good, but eh, it wasn't great outside of that. But anyways, let's get into year two and we will see how the team's looking. Okay, we are an 86 overall team heading into year two. We're looking good. The O-line is getting better, thankfully. And we are going to start Winston at receiver. Probably just star dev, but I guess he could have superstar, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. The defense is still looking really good. We've also had quite a few dev ups like Jer Brown, Charvarius Ward both went up to Superstar. Kamari Lasseter went up to Star. That's nice. Ayuk went from Superstar to X Factor. Purdy went from Star to Superstar. Like we've we've gotten a pretty good of a pretty good amount of important dev ups so far, and hopefully we can get even more this year. I think we're gonna have like an insane amount of contracts coming up this year, even more than the last few years. We'll see. Oh, is this the Brock Purdy contract year two? Oh no, <laughs> it might be. Yeah, I think it is. Oh no. All right, well. Not much we can do right now except get to the midseason point, so we'll see how we're doing. I know there's gonna be a very disappointing year, so, or I know there's gonna be a disappointing year eventually, but we'll see if it's this season. Also, every team in our division was one and two in the preseason. That's interesting. But yeah, let's get to the midseason and we will see how we do. Okay, yep, there's there's the disappointing season. We are only two and four. You can kind of tell when there's gonna be a disappointing season if your team does really poorly in the preseason with like the overall rank thing right here. We have a pretty good defense. We just have one of the worst offenses in the league, which isn't great with an 88 overall offense. No dev traits revealed on offense yet. I don't think we had any on defense. I want to see what what's the problem. Is is our O-line kind of cheeks this year? Or what is it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to bench at least Matt Hennessy, maybe Lucas Niang, but I don't know if we have a replacement. I just signed Lucas Niang out of free agency. He just went unsigned. We'll go with Brendel again at center. 
and I guess we could go Chuma Adoga at right tackle. I don't know if I feel much better about that, but yeah, we might as well try it. But now the fun part, the re-signing. Brock Purdy, Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, Charvarius Ward. This should be fun. We will go six years, 299 mil for Brock Purdy. Good Lord. I mean, he'll probably get paid more than this, honestly, but sure, he takes it. Now we have 20 mil to work with to re-sign Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, and Charvarius Ward. Oh boy. All right, well, I guess we'll start with Christian McCaffrey. I mean, if we lose Debo Samuel, we at least have Brandon Ayuk. We don't even really use Debo. What it? Ooh. I, I know this is gonna be controversial in the comment section. I don't give a fuck. We might trade Debo right here because I don't think we're gonna be able to bring him back and we don't use him anyways. We're gonna need a number two receiver, but we're bad right here anyway. So let's see what we can do with Debo. The Browns have a 77 overall number one receiver. Oh, it's Brian Thomas. They also have Malik Washington, who's really good, by the way. We'll trade Debo to the Panthers for a second round pick. Do I want to be realistic about it? Because this is my, like, more realistic trade. We could probably get a lot more for him, but I, I'm trying to be kind of realistic a little bit. I think in a contract year, he's almost 30 here. He hasn't been getting much production, so maybe he should even go for less, but whatever. But Christian McCaffrey will go three years, 54 mil and he takes it. And we will try to figure out a way to get George Kittle and I doubt we'll get Charvarius Ward back, but we'll try to get both of them back at the end of the year. So let's get to the end of this season. I, I hope we at least finish really bad so we can have a good draft pick, but we'll probably finish somewhere like nine and eight just so we don't make the playoffs, but we also don't get a good pick, probably. All right, well, somehow here we are at the end of year number two. And if you've seen these videos before, y'all know why we're here. Uh, before I reveal how we did in year two, if you haven't already, Already. Again, be sure to leave a like on the video. It, I would very much appreciate it. And if we can get to just 2,000 likes on this video, I have something very fun planned whenever we hit that goal. And it'll help me know that y'all are enjoying these videos. And of course, subscribe for more. Also, I realized we only have 52 players. Why? I signed a receiver after we traded Debo. I don't know. Whatever. That's fine. In year number two, we finished eight and nine, and we actually made the playoffs. I don't know how, but we did. Our offense actually ended up being all right after being absolutely terrible at the midseason. So let's check out our season stats this should be fun. Brock Purdy had 3,500 yards, 32 touchdowns, only four picks. He was very good. Almost 1,500 yards, 5.1 per carry, 11 touchdowns for Christian McCaffrey. Brandon Ayuk with 1,300 yards, 16 touchdowns, but not too much outside of him. These are like almost comically one player centered numbers. I mean, I know we had Debo at the midseason and we traded him, but he, he only had like 200 yards at that point. I don't know. That's interesting. The line ended up being really good after the midseason. Brendel and Adoga were both definitely good decisions to start them. But Fred Warner had 118 tackles. Tackles for loss, we had a lot led by 17 from Nick Bosa. And sacks, something I notice is when your team has a down year, you don't get nearly as many sacks as you should. Chase Young with nine and a half, which is fine, but only eight and a half from Nick Bosa at a 99 overall X factor, which he's almost a straight across the board 99. 99 speed rusher, 99 power rusher, 98 run stopper. And that equals eight and a half sacks, which isn't a terrible amount, but still. Javon Kinlaw had four sacks. Javon Hargrave only had one. Like, you see what I mean? It's weird. And our defense wasn't even the part that struggled for most of the year, so I don't know. But Fred Warner, three interceptions, two for Lenore, and then one for a few players. But MVP doesn't go to Dak, surprisingly. It goes to Patrick Mahomes. Offensive player of the year goes to Jalen Hurts. Brandon Ayuk at number three. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Larry Knox for the Commanders. Winston at number six. Oh yeah, which by the way, I'm sure everyone noticed it, but Jack Batten at number four for defensive rookie of the year. But yeah, Winston has superstar dev. I mean, if we just pretend we took him in the first round instead of James, then I mean, that that would look like a pretty good pick. You know what I mean? Well, we'll just pretend I did that. All right. But yeah, we went eight and nine and somehow made the playoffs going only eight and nine. And we're going to be taking on one of the other kind of broken teams in this game, the Atlanta Falcons. They don't seem as broken as they used to be, but they're still scary. So there isn't much else for us to do here. Let's just simulate this out and we'll see what happens. Okay. We actually smoke them. So we got destroyed by the Cowboys in the playoffs last year when we were a better team and they were like the same overall as us, but we destroy the Falcons this year when we're like the same overall. I don't know. Can we just have a close playoff game? I mean, I'll take us blowing a team out, but I don't know. I never know what to expect. This game's always full of surprises, but we're going to be, oh God, we're going to lose this game. We're going to be taking on the 13 and four, only 83 overall Washington commanders. Our offense is five overall 
better than theirs. Which, by the way, the commander's offensive playbook is pretty good a lot of the time. I might think about using it sometime in a rebuild. We'll see. But let's simulate this game out too, and we will see what happens here. And we get <laughs> we get beat by double digits to the 83 overall Washington Commanders. What a surprise. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think we're gonna win a Super Bowl, but I just wanted to turn this into a good team. I don't even know if we can do that though. This team is just so screwed in terms of cap space. But the Commanders go on to the Super Bowl just to get destroyed by the Chiefs, 35 to 14. Can we have a close playoff game, please? But now, once again, we are at the re-signing period, and I don't know who we're gonna be able to get back. I'll restructure any deal I can. We should be able to restructure the Purdy deal, and are there any players I could cut? Uh, not really. So again, we'll get into the restructures, and we'll see how much money we end up with. Oh, why does Brock Purdy, why are his eyes so dark? Why'd they make him look like that? He looks terrifying. Okay, well, shit, we were able to restructure now up to 57 mil in cap space, so we're looking pretty good. We should be able to rest- I almost said restructure, re-sign George Kittle. I hope he takes this. We haven't really had one of those unlucky, just random rejections, even though the player says they're super interested and we send him a pretty good deal, but three years, 57 mil, or 53.7 mil, he takes it. And Charvarius Ward is cheaper now than he was asking for last year, which is interesting, but three years, 61 mil, does he want to take that? And he does, okay. We are really dodging a bullet here. Chuba Hubbard regressed for some reason, that's something. I always forget players can regress at like 27 now. I don't I don't love that. Even for running backs who do regress early, I, I don't know about that one. I kind of want Chuma Adoga back. He was pretty good, but he's not interested. But hopefully we can find a better right tackle. But let's get into free agency and let's see what we can do. We actually have a little bit of money to work with this year at least. Okay, it is actually a very strong free agent class this year. I just don't know who I want to sign. I mean, we could sign Chris Olave, but we won't use him. We only use Brandon Ayuk. Like, that's it. I guess we could get Zach Tom, but he's kind of terrible in this game sometimes. Oh no, he's actually good. Yeah, no, never mind. In in the Packers rebuild I did, he was actually really good. Okay, we might go for him, and that would probably be the only player we could get. But honestly, I think I'm fine with that. I kind of want a defensive tackle too. Bobby Brown. We might go for Bobby Brown. Eric Armstead's a little too expensive to bring back. Yeah, Bobby Brown, sure. Or we could just draft a defensive tackle. That's probably the better option when we've been in such a bad cap situation. All right, I think we're just gonna go for Zach Tom. Again, a boring free agent class, but I, I am scared. And I'm glad I didn't go too crazy in the early free agent classes because we would have been screwed right now. But Zach Tom, let's see if we can sign him. And we do. Okay, cool. So now, I mean, this O-line's looking good. This whole team's looking good. Again, our receiving core isn't like amazing other than Brandon Ayuk, but like I said, he's the only one we use. And in the draft, we'll probably look for a defensive tackle and maybe another linebacker, but we have Batten. Winters is all right. So I don't know. We'll just see what happens when we get there. But in the draft, we pick at 25 and hopefully we have a better pick than we had last year. That's all. That's all I'm hoping for. I might go with a receiver again. Javier Starks looks really good. I'm scared of receivers in the first round again. I used to be scared of them because I was terrible at taking them. Then I figured out how to take them, but the last one I took was not good. Kendrick Snow in the second round looks pretty damn good. Well, eh, maybe. Peter Pike, that's not a real name. That's, that's crazy. I almost want to take him just for his name. He looks pretty good. We do kind of need a center. Bryce Smithson. Shout out to Fish Smithson. I remembered his name the other day. I just randomly thought of him. Another great name, but a real one. Well, actually, I think it was a nickname, but whatever. I want to see if there are one of those, like, crazy second to third round, like, 82 overall guards this year. <laughs> no. Carl Singleton is only a third to fourth round talent. This dude looks insane. Good strength, great speed, great jumping, not the best acceleration, but B awareness, B play rec, B pursuit, B finesse moves, B tackle, A power moves, just as block shedding isn't good. I mean, block shedding, it's important, but like, that dude's a third to fourth round talent, really? All right, well, let's go with, God, are we gonna take another receiver? I don't know. Ha Javier Starks could be absolutely terrible. I don't know, just again, none of the receivers look amazing to me. I really don't know what to do here. These just kind of feel like shit receiver classes back to back. Trent Barber actually looks really good, but he's a projected UDFA, so I guess we'll take him in like the fifth or sixth round or something. God, do we take another 71 overall receiver? We might. We'll hope he's not a 71, but Javier Starks, welcome to the team. Normal Dev, again, yeah. I don't know why I'm taking them. I mean, I know they're not good. I just want to hold out hope that they will be good. What was the receiver's name we just took? Hav I don't know why I already don't remember the player's name that I just took, but was it Javier Schaefer? I 
should remember that. I just took him. But were there two Javier Schaefers? I don't know. I want a defensive tackle, but I don't know. Should we go Dem Demarius Merritt? He has great speed, elite acceleration, which is interesting. He actually has decent block shedding. I wonder if there's a guy that has like A block shedding or something. Maybe that's the, the cheat code to find good defensive tackles. No, they all have C or lower. Oh, who was that? Terrell Brown. Oh, he looks pretty good. This guy's B block shedding. Oh, he's interesting. Okay, we might take him a little later too. None of these defensive tackles really stick out as that good either. I mean, Damian Graham could be. He's interesting. Or wait, no, wait. There was one that was listed as a, oh, it was this dude, Danelle Short. He's listed as a run stopper, but also as A finesse moves. But I mean, he's a second to third round talent. So meh. Should we just go Merritt? Cause he has an elite trait, I guess. Dalton Brown also has elite strength. This is going to be another terrible draft class. Let's just go with Merritt. Why not? Another normal dev. These have been some rough drafts. I, I don't know what I'm doing. At least I'm aware, but like, I don't know. We do still kind of need a center. I kind of like Steven McMillan, another non-scheme fit. Well, no, I guess he is a scheme, or no, he isn't a scheme fit. The guy last year was. This guy's a power center. We could also go Bryce Smithson just because of his name. I kind of want to do that. I'm not going to lie. He also looks good, so it wouldn't be like a throwaway pick or anything. You know what? We'll go with Bryce Smithson because it reminds me of Fish Smithson, and that's funny. That's what I get for taking a funny name. Normal dev. Wow, we haven't picked one hidden dev in this draft. Kill me. Either this is another terrible draft class or it's like terrible at these positions or I just suck. I have no idea. None of these linebackers look that good either. I mean, they all look all right, but they all have glaring weaknesses. Damian Lucas has at least elite speed. Sure, why not? Finally, we get a hidden dev. I mean, it's a linebacker that's gonna be like a 73 overall, but at least we get something. So I'll make one or two more picks and I will see y'all for the draft recap. Yeah, this was another interesting draft. Uh, <laughs> Starks is a 74. I don't wanna spend too much time on this one. This was not, this was even worse than last year, arguably. Uh, the other picks I made were Long, Slayton, and Booth. Was this just another terrible draft class? Cause everyone I took looked decent on paper. Oh yeah, oh. Okay, there were a few good players, but like there was a 69 overall quarterback taken in the top 10. The Giants just love reaching on quarterbacks in the top 10 lately for some reason. 73 overall defensive end. Okay, yeah, this, I mean, there were a few good players again, but eh, that's not great. Okay, I know for an absolute fact. I set the draft class strength to strong. Is it like not saving? Okay, no, it is. It is strong. This is the worst strong draft class I've ever seen. Last year, I wasn't sure if it like fully registered because I did it after the season started, but I don't know. Either way, we got some players, I guess. Let's get into year three. But here we are heading into year three. This is probably the best team has looked. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I just like that we actually have a decent overall O-line. It's probably going to play terribly, but it looks good. Hopefully our receivers can develop this year we now have pretty much every main 49ers player that's left under contract now so the team's definitely not getting any cheaper but actually something interesting is long got his dev trait revealed but and it's superstar but I don't know why I guess he just played a, a lot of snaps in the preseason because it wasn't like a preseason dev up or anything which happens sometimes so I don't know we'll take it I don't know why he got it but we'll take it or well I don't even know if he got it it might have just revealed because he played so much but yeah we don't really have any problems with this team anymore. Uh, we just kind of have to develop Long and Lucas and Winston and all them, but that should happen this year, hopefully. So let's get to the mid-season point of year three, and we'll see how we're doing. Hopefully better than last year. Okay, we're four and three. Not, not bad. I was going to say not as good as we should be, but we're only in 86. Like, this isn't the best realistic rebuild team I've ever had. Oh, the Saints are a 79. That's not great. The Lions are in, 80, are in 86. It looks like we might actually have one of the best rosters in the league. The Commanders have an 87 now, the Dolphins have an 88, which is weird because they normally go to shit in franchise because of their cap space. The Chiefs also have an 88, so there are some really good teams here, but we are like top 10-ish, like in the five to 10 range it seems like. So we're pretty good, at least in terms of overall. This year our defense is struggling and our offense is doing super well. I don't understand how playbooks work in this game, but that's more fair because we have not a great overall defense and a really good overall offense, but we have some re-signings again. And this year, it's going to be Fred Warner, Chase Young, and J.R. Brown. Also, Javon Hargrave. I hate when it puts players back here. I don't know why it does that. I mean, I don't know if it matters because I don't think we'll be able to re-sign him anyways, but whatever. Don't think we're going to be able to re-sign Fred Warner. How's Chase Young doing? He ha I don't think he's had a double-digit sack season with us. No. He had six the first year, nine and a half the second year, and now four this year. So, eh, I don't know. If, if he finishes the year really strong, we'll probably re-sign him. He's not that expensive, though. 
I mean, I don't know. We might just wait until the end of the year for all of these because I want Warner back, if anyone, and we can't afford him right now. We actually have a tandem breakout, though, and a rivalry game. I don't normally click on those, though. We never win the rivalry games for some reason. Damn, does it want to load, please? We will go, I guess, just praise George Winston, whatever. 2,500 XP for Brandon Ayuk, and then I don't think George Winston's gonna get that, but if he, if he does, I will show it. But let's see if we hit the breakout, and if not, I'll just see all at the end of the year. Okay, well, we once again make the playoffs going 10 and 7. We haven't missed the playoffs once in this rebuild. We, we definitely haven't had the best records in the world. Like, we didn't even have a winning record last year, but we do at least make the playoffs this year, and the team was kind of bad. We had a mid-offense and, like, a bottom six defense overall in the league. Is it new playbook time? Do we want to play that game? I hate changing the playbooks because I, I it just feels so lame that you pretty much have to do that or your team will underperform. But even then, it probably will underperform anyways. I don't know. It's just stupid. Playbooks matter way too much. It is what it is. Brock Purdy, 3,600 yards, 37 touchdowns, only three picks. He was insane this year. This is maybe his best season just for like touchdown to interception ratio, everything combined. Christian McCaffrey, 1,300 yards, 4.9 per carry. Only four rushing touchdowns though. That's interesting. Almost 1,500 yards in 22 touchdowns for Brandon Ayuk. That's crazy, but he was like our only receiver, which is kind of another reason I want to go with a new offensive playbook at least. We'll see. Oh, and the blocking was kind of terrible this year, at least for a couple of the players. Patrick Paul, 16 sacks allowed. I don't know where that came from, but nine from Zach Tom, seven for Trevor Haynes. Really, our only really good lineman was Christian Haynes. I just realized we have two Haynes and they're both spelled different. I don't know how I just noticed that. But Fred Warner, 134 tackles, 116 for Lucas, tackles for loss, 16 for Young, 13 for Bosa, 12 for Hargrave, 11 for Long as a rookie. And sacks? Only eight for Nick Bosa, seven for Hargrave, five for... Yeah, oh, really? I mean, these three right here average like a 90 overall, and it was only 30 sacks combined between them. I have seen Miles Garrett get like 35 sacks before in a season in this game. Like, new defensive playbook time? I think it is. But we had three picks from Warner, two for Lucas as a rookie, and then one for Hufanga and Batten. Let's check out yearly awards, though. MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes again. Purdy at number eight. I'm surprised he was all the way down at eight. I guess just not many yards. Offensive player of the year goes to Brandon Ayuk. Purdy at number eight again. Defensive player of the year goes to Micah Parsons on the Rams. That's something. No thanks as a Seahawks fan. But oh yeah, of course that would happen here. Wait, we're the 49ers. Still a division rival. That's great. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Jonathan Hickson for the Saints. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Caleb Living. For the Falcons, Damian Lucas at number two. Of course we get cucked. It has to happen at least once in a rebuild. Malik Long at number six. But yeah, it's new defensive and offensive playbook time, I think. Our offense has been wor worse as a whole throughout the rebuild, but our defense was worse this year. Should we just go straight Cowboys ac like across the board? I mean, that's kind of cursed because that's kind of like an old school rival of this team, but we could. Why can I not find them? Am I blind? There they are. Are they just the same playbooks pretty much? I don't know. We'll see. The 49ers don't even run as much like cover three anymore, do they? Like they haven't in a while. Like that's not really their thing anymore. Did I say Cowboys? I meant 49ers. I don't know. I'm getting myself confused. We'll just go Cowboys across the board. It's probably going to make us lose this game because, well, I don't know if it's going to make us lose this game. We would probably lose this game anyways, but we'll just see what happens. The Bears were also kind of terrible. They had a really bad offense and a not great defense. I mean, they were great in some things, but overall they were 12 for total yards. So we'll just have to see what happens. We have some upgrades grades before we lose. One for Patrick Paul, thankfully, because he needs it. But let's sim this game. I can't wait to lose. Okay, no, we do win. Hey, maybe the Cowboys playbook or just the strat. I don't know. We win 35 to 14. We kind of destroy them. And now we're going to be taking on our playbooks in the Dallas Cowboys. They had the best defense in terms of points per game. Overall was fifth. They had the eighth offense for yards. I mean, we have their playbooks and we have the better team by a decent bit at this point. We're three overall better. Let's, let's see what happens here. Okay, and we win. That's all we need. Hey, broken playbooks and we're good. We win 31 to 24. I mean, if we're being realistic, think about how stupid that is. I mean, you can give Kyle Shanahan as much flack as you want for choking playoff games, but he literally invented this whole team and the whole league copied his like offensive style. The fact that we're switching away from that to go with a Mike McCarthy type playbook set is just insane to me that it's working better. Like that's another reason I hate playbooks in this game is 
is because the teams that have good coaching have like terrible playbooks in this game. I mean, there are exceptions. Oh, the Chiefs went 17 and 0. That's cool. But I mean, yeah, I I don't know. Like the Falcons, these are these are still like the Arthur Smith playbooks. Are we being for real here? They did have a good defense in real life, but they did not have a good defense here. So I don't know. I don't know why they're here. They look like they were terrible this year. Anyways, let's simulate this game and we'll see if we can move on to a Super Bowl. And we do 25 to 10. I did not think we would win that game, honestly. I thought if there was any team we would lose to, it would be the team that struggled, only went eight and nine. That's a lower overall team than us. But no, we do win. And we are gonna be taking on, oh God. Should I make this the last game of the rebuild? It would be a poetic ending either way, whether we win or lose. We either just finish the same way that the 49ers did in real life, pause, that was weird phrasing, but either we get revenge here or we go out sad like the 49ers did in real life. I think that's a great way to end this rebuild. I wanted to do another year, but this is too perfect. We have a Super Bowl media day though. Oh, and this would be even better. I mean, they're 17 and 0. They can complete the perfect season on us for the first time, not ever. I think the Dolphins did it, but at least the first perfect season in 50 years or however long it's been. But this is, this game is everything. This is the last game of the rebuild. We get 10 staff points. We have a hot opponent scenario. You know, most of the time I argue uh, that there shouldn't be hot opponent scenarios for the Super Bowl because they're in the Super Bowl. No shit, they're hot. So are we. But they're 17 and 0. I, I think this is a fair hot opponent scenario. I guess they're 19 and 0 at this point. But we will go be confident. Y'all know me. Plus 10 everything for both teams. We have some upgrades though. Anything major here? No. But let's jump in here and let's see if this 49ers team can get revenge. They are a 90 to our 89, so they are better. But overall, it doesn't really matter in simulation anyways. As I always say, time to wait 20 minutes for this to load. But here we go in the Super Bowl. In Super Bowl 61, maybe? I don't know what LXI is. It's maybe 61? I don't know. But let's sim this game out, and we will see if this rebuild is a success or not. My guess is no, but I'm always pessimistic, so we'll see. The Chiefs score and make it 7-0 early. We do match, though, to make it 7-7. They kick a field goal, but it looks like we have to pump. But we get the ball back and bring it up to 14-10. They're kind of stalling, but so are we. They eventually score to make it 17-14, but so do we. So do they to make it 24-20. And that is a depressing way to go out. We lose 24 to 21. Our defense did pretty well. Our offense just kind of stalled. We had some really good opportunities to score too, and we just didn't. That's tough. Well, that's a that's a poetic ending to this. So I think that's gonna have to do it. That's gonna be a painful watch for 49ers fans. That's a similar score too. Wasn't it 25 to 22? This was 24 to 21. Literally a two total point difference. That's rough. I'm sorry. But either way, this was a pretty good team we built. I mean, 89 overall. Second best roster in the league behind the Chiefs, I think. Oh, Lucas had an X fact. Damn. But yeah, very strong roster. This was a surprisingly hard rebuild. Well, I guess it wasn't, but just the cap space got rough. But I hope y'all enjoyed. Again, be sure to like if you haven't already. I would very much appreciate it. Subscribe for more. But thank you all so much for watching. And with that, I will see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.